Here I have a 14 pounds brisket which is choice grade and I am going to be making homemade pastrami out of it. As you can see after opening the package it comes with a lot of fat but since we're going to be smoking and brining this brisket it is important to remove the fat. And here's how I like to trim it. Since the point is the fattiest part of the brisket, there's enough intramuscular fat, so I tried to remove almost all of it. But as you can see, that is not the case for the flat. Since it's normally dry, I like to leave at least a quarter inch of fat so that we can enjoy it. In order to be considered pastrami, we have to brine it in a cure. And these are all the spices I'm going to be using for today. And remember, exact amount and ingredients on the description down below. The first thing I like to do is toast a few of them to enhance the flavor. So my black pepper, coriander and mustard seeds get toasted just for a little bit. Be sure to keep the pan moving and do not let it burn. After just a few minutes you can really smell the fragrance that comes out of it. That lets you know that it's ready. In order to keep them coarse I like to grind it with my pesto and mortar. And this is what I'm looking for. Once that was done, I like to combine everything together and here's what I got. A tablespoon of whole cloves, red chili flakes, allspice berries, ground ginger, ground mace, two crushed bay leaves, and to finish it off, the crushed cinnamon stick. Now mix it well and my pickling spices are done. In a large pot, I threw in a gallon of water, threw in my pickling spices, followed by some salt, granulated sugar, and finished it off with curry pink salt. Now mix it well and bring it to a boil. As soon as it starts boiling, remove it from the heat. In a large container, I like to put a cooling rack and throw in about a gallon of ice. There are two reasons for the ice. One is to cool down our brine and the second one is that we need an additional gallon of water. This will match out perfectly with a ratio of two gallons of water. It is important that you cool down your brine. You don't whatsoever want to cook your brisket at this time. So before inserting it, make sure it's 100% cool. Once that's done, the next step is to put in our brisket. Now there's a good chance that your brisket will float just like mine. So I'm using some weight to keep it down. Now all there's left to do is close it well with clinch plastic so that it can brine on my refrigerator for seven days. Once the seven days were up, I quickly removed the clinch paper followed by the weights. On a sheet pan, I laid some paper towels and removed my brisket from the brine and this is what it looked like. Check it out. Now if we just went ahead and cooked this brisket as is, it will be extremely salty. Since it was brining for 7 days, the salt really penetrated all the way through. So to tone things down, I am washing the salt off completely. When you're washing it, don't think that you're going to be washing out all the salt. Trust me, you can wash it like you mean it. If you skip this step, it will be extremely salty. Then I brought it back into the house and dry it thoroughly. For my rub, I kept it pretty simple. I added some black pepper and coriander. After grinding it coarse, I mixed it up with some garlic powder. Then I mixed it well and my rub was done. To ensure that my rub was thick, I lightly coated with yellow mustard. It is important for you to remember that the brisket will shrink as it's cooking. So even though I'm seasoning it all the way through, I keep that in mind so that I don't over season it. Then I transferred it to my smoking pan and here is the perfect amount of seasoning for your pastrami. Now all there's left to do is to smoke it. I am smoking this beautiful pastrami at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for 5 hours. So let's do it. After 5 hours, I removed it from my cooker and here's what we got. I just wish you can smell this. 
The red mahogany color is an indication that we have a beautiful smoke throughout the entire brisket. Now that I have the perfect color and the exact amount of smoke I want, I want to finish it cooking. And in order to speed up the process, I am wrapping in aluminum foil. To finish cooking it, I am leaving it inside of my cooker for an additional 5 hours. But I am not going by time, I'm going by feel. When I poke my probe and there's no resistance, that's when I know it's done. Once it was done cooking, I quickly removed from my cooler, wrap it in the tower and put it on a cooler so that it can rest for at least 2 hours. As it was resting, I decided to toast a few breads to make a Reuben sandwich. Just throw in some butter and toast it until it's golden brown. After 2 hours, I quickly unwrapped it. As you can see, it's still blazing hot, but I could no longer wait, so I was rewarded with this. Check it out. To my surprise, a very small part did not get the cure, but if we do a bend test, you know how this is gonna taste. Extremely tender, and if I pull them apart, oh yes, as tender as it can be. And there you have it, the perfect pastrami made at home. To finish off my Reuben sandwich, I threw in some Thousand Island dressing, my incredible homemade pastrami, a little bit of sauerkraut, baby Swiss cheese, melted using my Searzol, and my Reuben sandwich was done. Alright everybody, we have our beautiful you know what this is, Angel? What? You know you've been asking me for pastrami, pastrami, pastrami? Mm -hmm. That's a Reuben sandwich with pastrami. You never had it. Angel never had it. He always wanted to give it a try. He wanted to know what it what tastes is Ruben? like. What is Reuben? Reuben is called this kind of sandwich. And inside of it, you've got some pastrami and some other goodies, which I'm not going to tell you. It's going to be a surprise. I want to know if you like it. <laughs> There's no green stuff, and that's a promise. It's cheese. Yes, there's cheese. No, you, you can't dissect it and take the stuff out. You have to go for it, <laughs> all right? That's not fair. All right, let's give it a try. And you tell me how you like it with everything. I'm going to get cheesy. I'm going to get the cheesy side. The cure, as you saw it there when I sliced it, apparently it didn't go all the way throughout the brisket. But at the same time, it gave a nice color where it did. I was just trying to see what the hell's in there. <laughs> you, it you're trying to figure out. Anyway, cheers, buddy. Let me cheers. know how you like it. Go for it. Mmm, so soft. Super, oh my goodness. Super wow. tender. I love pastrami, man. Wow. <laughs> That's good. That is good, huh? It is so much more superior than the ones that you buy on the supermarket, it's everybody. So, so, so soft. Super tender. Yeah. Wow. And I cut it thick, too. It's like, I barely chew it. Yeah, exactly. You know, a lot of people never had it, especially from other countries, for example, in Brazil. That is not popular. So if you never had pastrami, how can we describe it to somebody that never had it, Angel? It's mm. very peppery, super, super tender. It definitely leaves a little tangy on your tongue. That taste of pepper at the end, right? as the aftertaste, like on your tongue, you feel it. Feel a little numbness because it's so peppery, right? Yeah. And because so that crust has a little peppery taste. The brisket is, come on, it's like butter. The brisket super tender, everybody. Falling it's super, apart. Super, super soft. I think the biggest thing is that smoky and and peppery flavor comes through the most. I think that's yep. probably the the biggest punch in the face. Mm-hmm. It's good. It is amazing. Angel approves. Angel approves. Angel approves. It is so much superior than store bought. Like, it's not even close. Angel never had it because he can't compare to it. But I have something for you to compare to it. I bought it so that you would compare this one here with the one from the refrigerator from the store, the supermarket. What the heck is this? <laughs> Come, Angel. Pastrami. What is that? That's pastrami. Dude, that looks like so thin. Yeah, it's like ham. Look. Obviously, this one is going to be cold. 
but you got the feeling of it. You never had it. I'm not excited. I really like pastrami regardless, but go for it. I'm not excited. Why not? It's like ham. Yeah, but you just gave me a really good one, and then you want me to try this one. Yeah, of course this one is better, Angel, but this one is still good. I like it as well. It's okay. Yeah, of course it's better. But you see that taste? Very, very similar taste. Way less flavor, though. Yeah. The flavor is not as strong. Not as much pepper. Mm hmm. Not enough smoke. If you have to pick, go guys, or this one, Angel. <laughs> this is so much superior, and I hope you give it a try, everybody. And if you leave somewhere that you have never even tasted the taste of pastrami, try it, dude. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. It's really good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.